What is going on, everyone? This is JWB's Wide Receiver Weekly Ranking Show. I am Wyatt, here to break down my top 24 wide receivers for Week 11. For all the new viewers out there, welcome to JWB Fantasy Football. We're here to help you crush all of your competition. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. We're on our way to our goal of 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. It would mean the world to us if you help us get there. To all returning viewers, we appreciate you. We love you. For everyone out there, if you got something wrong with my wide receivers in these rankings, if you agree with me with these rankings, get down in these comments. Let me know what's up. I appreciate y'all. Let's roll that intro. We'll get into these wide receivers. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. A few notes before we actually get to the wide receivers. As always, you can find all of our rankings over at jwbfantasyfootball.com. Not just my own, but also our expert ranker, our other expert rankers, Tyler and Skyler, who are absolutely crushing it this year. Also, make sure before the Sun Games lock on Sunday, you come check make those rankings in case there was any big news that happened Sunday morning and we had to adjust because of it. We are recording a little bit ahead of time as we do with these videos. And also... Everything in this show, when I reference points, we're talking about half PPR because that is what our rankings are based off of. That's what the Fantasy Pros ECR is based off of. It's what we work off of. Let's get into it. My wide receiver 24 for this week is Nico Collins. He is the Fantasy Pros ECR wide receiver 26, a little bit ahead of the ECR here for Nico Collins. Playing the Cardinals, who are a league average team versus wide receivers this year. But Nico Collins has been doing fantastic with CJ Stroud there. He's tied for wide receiver 14 on the year in points per game with 13.1. He's third in the NFL in yards per target among wide receivers with at least 20 targets. And he's doing it on just a 20.7% target share, which is why it's a hard to have him up too high at this point, because we know this target share is only going to get so high on that offense because there's a lot of weapons to go around. Also, CJ Stroud is a really talented quarterback who is able to find the open man. He doesn't just force feed it. He always finds manages to find the open man. Now, a lot of times that is Nico Collins. They also drop a lot of plays for Nico Collins. That helps explain why ECR is down, but I'm also ahead of ECR because of how good Nico Collins is. Wide receiver 23 for me is Adam Thielen. He is ECR wide receiver 22. He's playing the Cowboys who give up the fourth least points to wide receivers this year. He's wide receiver 11 on the year in points per game with 14, but... He's only averaging 7.9 points per game over his last three games. That magic that's been there in the start of the year is starting to fade away. Now, I do think that can come back a little bit because he's still far and away the number one passing target for that Panthers offense. So, like, just on volume alone, he's kind of a low-end wide receiver, too. It's possible some of that can come back, but I'm a little bit weary of it, which is why I'm a spot lower than ECR here. Wide receiver 22 for me is DeAndre Hopkins. He is the Fantasy Pros DCR wide receiver 21. Playing the Jaguars this week, who are the 13th worst matchup for wide receivers. Now, since Will Levis came in, first game with Will Levis, he had that massive game. But the last two games since then, 8.5 and 4.2 as Will Levis has come crashing down to earth. Now, Will Levis, I've said, you know, if you watch the good, the bad, the box score shows that I do, which is the weekly recap. I've talked about this. They're like, he really impressed in that first game, but he has come back down to earth. I still think he's impressing in a way for what I expected from him as a prospect coming into the NFL for his first few starts. I think he's doing a lot of things really well just for fancy. Like it's not quite there and it's hurting DeAndre Hopkins. Thing is though, DeAndre Hopkins is similar to Adam Thielen far and away the number one wide receiver for this team. So you expect the volume to be there and he is getting volume. It's just, it's not really there for the points, which is why I'm a spot below ECR here. Wide receiver 21 for me is Terry McLaurin. He is ECR wide receiver 20. Playing the Giants who give up the third most points to wide receivers this year. Great matchup, obviously. Terry McLaurin, though, wide receiver 34 on the year in points per game with only 10.4. Sam Howell and the Commanders are passing the ball a lot, but Sam Howell's passing the ball a lot to everyone. He's passing the ball around he's not really focusing on a given wide receiver you know terry mclaurin leads the commanders in targets but he's doing it on a fairly low target share for a number one wide receiver so terry mclaurin's ceiling hasn't quite been there also he hasn't scored that many touchdowns this year so maybe there's some touchdown regression coming his way either way just because of the way the ball gets spread around that offense despite the good matchup i'm not going to get too high on terry mclaurin which is why i'm a spot below ecr 
Wide receiver 20 for me is DJ Moore. He's ECR wide receiver 23. You see why I'm below three spots on those pre or spots on those previous three wide receivers because I'm high on DJ Moore this week compared to the ECR. He's playing the Lions, who allow the 10th most points wide receivers this season. DJ Moore himself is wide receiver 13 on the year in points per game with 13.3. But if you look at the first five games of the year in which he played with Justin Fields as he finished those games, it was 19.3 points per game. Now, that was also included in an unsustainable 14.7% target share during that time. But it goes to show you how like the ceilings are completely different for DJ Moore when he's playing with Justin Fields as opposed to Tyson Badgett. Tyson Badgett was nice, like... Bears found something for a backup QB in Tyson Badgett. But Badgett is not Justin Fields. And DJ Moore's ceiling was obviously much lower with Justin Fields, or with Tyson Badgett, and it's obviously much higher with Justin Fields. So I'm sitting here three spots ahead of ECR. Wide receiver 19 for me is Tank Dell. He's also ECR wide receiver 19. Playing the Cardinals, as I mentioned previously, league average versus wide receivers. Tank Dell, wide receiver 16 on the year in points per game with 12.7. So he's actually worse than Nico Collins in point per game, but he's getting more targets than Nico Collins is. And they are close enough in that, like, they are 1A, 1B on any given week that goes back and forth for the Houston offense that I'm going to bet on the target share that Tank Dell is getting slightly more than Nico Collins. They're both being used downfield a good bit. They're both very efficient so far on this offense because he's CJ Stroud is so good. You know, they're, they're really kind of neck and neck. It's just that little bump in extra target share that tank Dell gets that has him higher in these rankings for both me and the ECR wide receiver 18 for me is Christian Kirk. Also ECR wide receiver 18 playing the Titans who are the seventh best matchup for wide receivers. If you remove week one for Christian Kirk, which we know the disaster week one was, and seems like a outlier at this point, He's got 12.5 points per game in the remaining games. And he leads the Jaguars this year with a 23.1% target share. He's been one of the more consistent parts of that passing offense. Really the most consistent and obviously the most productive part of that offense. We kind of got fooled a little bit, I would say, with Calvin Ridley to start the season. Still think Calvin Ridley is talented and can be good. He's going to have blowout games. But we know Calvin Ridley at this point. He's going to be inconsistent this year. Christian Kirk. Not inconsistent. He's producing on a regular basis as the number one wide receiver, really, for this offense. Wide receiver 17 for me is DK Metcalf, also ECR wide receiver 17. You're going to see I'm actually pretty close to ECR the rest of the way uh, with these wide receivers, but DK Metcalf, he's playing the Rams, give up the 11th least points to wide receivers this year. DK Metcalf, I know, I know this happens like every week, basically. You know, I talk about how I'm head of ECR or you know, this is why ECR is so high on DK Metcalf and they're with it, but 10.6 points per game this year. I know, but only two touchdowns. And that's the thing here. Like this, this is the outlier for him. He's got 3.2% touchdown rate this year, but he has a 7% touchdown rate for his career. He's fourth in red zone targets this year. Like the touchdowns are coming for DK Metcalf. Wide receiver 16 for me is Puka Nakua. He's also ECR wide receiver 16. Playing the Seahawks, who are an average team versus wide receivers. Here's the thing. Matthew Stafford is back. I know it was rough last week with Brett Rippon. Matthew Stafford is back. We know what they've what Puka Nakua has been with Matthew Stafford. The only thing is Puka Nakua is dealing with a tiny bit of an injury, but he should be fine for this game. But like that little bit of the injury is enough to just have me down. Just, you know, wide receiver 16 opposed to like what he did previously in the year with Matthew Stafford was a wide receiver one wide receiver 15 for me is Devonta Smith. He's also ECR wide receiver 15 playing the chiefs to give up the ninth least points to wide receivers this year. Not the best matchup, but Dallas Goddard is now hurt for the Eagles won't be playing. And we know that when that happens, the target shares consolidate more in that offense. So last year while Dallas Goddard was hurt, Devonta Smith had 13.3 points per game, and he had at least eight targets in every one of those games. So I'm expecting some good things for Devonta Smith this week. Wide receiver 14 for me, Debo Samuel. Also fancy pro C's here, wide receiver 14. Playing the Buccaneers, who are the fourth best matchup for wide receivers. In, in games where Debo Samuel's played at least 50% of the snaps, because we do know he had the game against Cleveland where he left very early, in those games where he actually played 12.4 points per game, we know that his ceiling is very high in this 49ers offense. This is a very good matchup. That is why he's here at wide receiver 14. 
Wide receiver 13 for me is Devontae Adams. He's ECR wide receiver 11. Back to being a little bit different from the ECR as I'm two spots behind them here with Devontae Adams. He's playing the Dolphins, who are the 12th best matchup for wide receivers. A decent matchup. And with Aiden O'Connell, he has 33 targets in three games. Aiden O'Connell started. Just the points aren't really there for him because Aiden O'Connell, you know, isn't that good of a quarterback. I have a lot of hope for Aiden O'Connell. I think that he's looked fairly good just NFL standards wise for what the expectations were, but the fantasy points aren't quite coming for Devontae Adams with Aiden O'Connell. And truthfully, they haven't been coming for a while because he hasn't scored a touchdown since week three. So touchdown regression should be hitting at some point. And I think that's why, you know, me and the ECR still have enough faith to have him ranked up here as, you know, a fringe wide receiver one, despite the points per game he's scoring. But that's also why I'm behind ECR. Wide receiver 12 for me is Garrett Wilson. He's ECR wide receiver 13, playing the Bills, who are an average team versus wide receivers. Garrett Wilson, these last four games where him and Zach Wilson have started to get back on track a little bit more, like Zach Wilson has started to play a little bit better. He still looks really bad, but like better for him. Over these last four games, Garrett Wilson has 12.6 points per game, and that's without a touchdown in any of those games. He has at least 12 targets in Every one of those games, like the volume and usage is absolutely absurd for Garrett Wilson. He is an outstanding player. The fact that he's even got this 12.6 points per game with Zach Wilson as his quarterback is astounding. I can't say enough good things about Garrett Wilson. We are robbed of the magical season he could have had with Aaron Rodgers, but I digress. Wide receiver 11 for me is Jalen Waddell. He's ECR wide receiver 10, playing the Raiders, who the seventh worst matchup for wide receivers this year. Over his last five games, Jalen Waddle's up to 12.9 points per game. We know that those first few games of the year weren't quite doing it for us. I am a spot behind, though, because I do think with Devin and Chain being there now, this offense has changed a little bit. We saw it before when Devin and Chain was playing that they're passing to the running backs a little bit more this year than they were in years past. And Jalen Waddle, while still you know very big part of the offense, it's like a, just a tick down from where he was last year. Wide receiver 10 for me is Brandon Ayuk. He's ECR wide receiver 9, playing the Buccaneers, who are the fourth best matchup for wide receivers. Tied for wide receiver 14 on the year with Nico Collins with that 13.1 points per game. Just a notch below ECR here as I do think that he does have that floor to his game. We've seen it for Brandon Ayuk. It's true for basically every person on the 49ers offense other than Christian McCaffrey. Uh, but that's why I am a spot below ECR. Wide receiver nine for me is Mike Evans. He's ECR wide receiver 12, three spots ahead of ECR here. Playing the 49ers, who are the ninth best matchup for wide receivers. This is really just a vote of confidence in the season that Mike Evans is having, even against a team like the 49ers. Yes, they're uh, giving up points to wide receivers, but they do have that really good pass rush that can get after Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield's actually been pretty good under pressure this year. I think a lot of people are going to look at this matchup. And I think a lot of the rankers look at this matchup as they're behind me and say like the pass rusher, is going to get after Baker Mayfield and that offense isn't really going to do anything. So we need to be lower on Mike Evans. And I'm going to say that I do think they're going to get after Baker Mayfield, but I think Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans will still find a way because Mike Evans is so good. Baker Mayfield has been playing so well under pressure this year. And I think that they're going to be playing from behind having to pass more than normal also. And Mike Evans has been so consistent this year Six touchdowns out of nine games, having a you know renaissance year. His wide receiver nine on the year with 14.6 points per game. It's his highest points per game since 2019. It's just, I have a lot of confidence in Mike Evans. Wide receiver eight for me is Cooper Cup. As I'll mention, actually, from here on out, I'm almost, again, very close to the same as ECR. But wide receiver eight for me, Cooper Cup, ECR, wide receiver eight. Playing the Seahawks, average team versus wide receiver, as previously mentioned. And like I mentioned with with Bukunakua, Matthew Stafford is back. We know what Cooper Cup can be with Matthew Stafford. He has four games, or yeah, four games with him this year. And we had like Jekyll and Hyde, two really good games, two not so good games. I think those not so good games are really the outlier because we know Cooper Cup's history, right? It's just down here at wide receiver eight because Matthew Stafford's returning from an injury. So I don't want to get too excited for those wide receivers. Wide receiver seven, Stephon Diggs. He's also ECR wide receiver seven. Playing the Jets, who are the worst matchup for wide receivers. Now, this is why, like, you got to have them down in my eyes. It's, the Jets are for real. 
That defense is for real. They're very good against wide receivers. Sauce Gardner is an extremely talented cornerback, likely going to follow Stephon Diggs all game. And even though Stephon Diggs is having this amazing year, 16.5 points per game, that is actually wide receiver seven on the year. Wide receiver six for me is Keenan Allen. He's also ECR wide receiver six, playing the Packers, who are the fifth worst matchup for wide receivers. Keenan Allen having that amazing year. Wide receiver three on the year with 18.7 points per game. It is just that this matchup, I've mentioned before about how slot wide receivers uh, have an easier time against bad matchups because it's hard to, you know, uh, jam them in the slot. It's harder. They get off the line much easier. Keenan Allen's playing a good amount outside now too as well. But it's just that Packers uh, team really finds a way to make games ugly. And I don't know if this is actually going to end up being a shootout like a lot of Chargers games are. Wide receiver five for me is Jamar Chase. He's he's also ECR wide receiver five, playing the Ravens right now as I record. At halftime, five targets, only one catch for 10 yards. Not very good. This was a tough matchup to begin with. Joe Burrow left this game, actually, uh, as he kind of re-injured his wrist. Apparently, like, he was dealing with this wrist injury during the week and got fell down it on it bad after a, a hit and he's out for this game hard to believe that Jamar Chase is going to have a decent game now because of that uh unfortunate wide receiver four for me is Amon Ross St. Brown he's also ECR wide receiver four playing the Bears we're a league average team versus wide receivers this year which, but that's mostly because teams just run on the Bears because they're usually beating them uh so I do think that they're still susceptible to the pass and I'm going to say Brown wide receiver six on the year with 17.2 points per game. We know how good he's been, how many targets he gets each and every week as the focal point of that passing offense. Wide receiver three for me is CD lamb. He's ECR wide receiver two, getting a little bit different here in the top three. He's playing the Panthers who are the third worst matchup for wide receivers. This is another team where I think that's really more just because teams run on the Panthers a lot. Uh, but CeeDee Lamb, 18.2 points per game this year, but 30.5 points per game in the last three games uh, as the Cowboys offense has been in these like really big shootouts or you know really putting it on a team like they put it on the Giants last week. I was actually a little bit surprised about that. If you watched this show last week, I was behind ECR and CeeDee Lamb, which turned out to be a mistake because I thought that against the Giants, they would just be beating them so bad in the first half. They would slow it down, wouldn't play a lot. And I mean, the Cowboys didn't end up doing that. They didn't really play the fourth. The first team offense didn't really play the fourth quarter. It's just that the Giants like hung around for a little bit enough in the beginning of the game that the Cowboys had to keep trying to put it on them. And they did that into the third, through the third quarter. And uh, CD Lamb had this amazing game. Uh, I'm going to again, make the little bet that I think it's possible that the Cowboys, you know, put it on the Panthers so much early that they don't have to put up, continue to put up much offense in the second half. And for that reason, I have A.J. Brown as my wide receiver two this week, and he's ECR wide receiver three. He's playing the Chiefs, who give up the ninth least points to wide receivers. I'm not, also a not-so-great matchup. But he's wide receiver two this year with 18.9 points per game. He has at least 15.7 fantasy points each of the last seven games. He's been more consistent player than C.D. Lamb. I know C.D. Lamb's had these amazing blow-up games these last three weeks. A.J. Brown's just been doing it for longer, and I have a lot of confidence in him. And then, of course, you know, Tyreek Hill, wide receiver one. He's the wide receiver one for everyone each and every week. 21.1 points per game this year, having a fantastic year. He's playing the Raiders, you know, as I mentioned with Jalen Wallace, seventh worst matchup for wide receivers. We just don't really care about that with Miami, especially not with Tyreek Hill, who's been just so, so good this year. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of JWB's wide receiver weekly rankings. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at YFB underscore FF. You can follow JWB, JWB underscore FF. Like I said in the beginning of the show, find all of our rankings for the week at JWBFantasyFootball.com. Please like and subscribe if you have not yet. Please jump down in the comments and let me know how you feel about my rankings. Do you, do, do you agree? Do you disagree? Why do you agree or disagree? I want to hear about it. I want to talk with you. Also, in the description of this video, you find the link to our free Discord, the link to our Patreon for all of our bonus content. And if you'd like to play best ball and aren't on underdog yet, you can sign up with code JWB for a first-time deposit match up to $100. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you next time.